In this video, we're going to be going over how you can model a DC motor, like this one here. Uh, so first let's take a look at what we know about a DC motor. We know that if we apply a voltage across the two terminals here, like with this 9 volt battery, the motor spins. We also know that if you turn the motor and you hook up something like an oscilloscope or a voltmeter to the two terminals, then you'll read a voltage. We also know that there are a bunch of coils inside of here that make it work. So with only that knowledge and a couple other equations, we can uh, go ahead and model this. So to start, we'll draw the circuit for a DC motor. So we know that we have to put in a voltage to make it turn. So we'll represent that with just a plain old voltage source. We know that there's a bunch of wire in here, and wire always has resistance. So we'll go ahead and draw a resistor. Call that R. We also know that that wire is wrapped in coils, and coils have inductance. So we'll draw an inductor. Call that L. And the last thing that we went over is that turning the motor results in a voltage going back into the motor. So we'll represent that effect with another voltage source. We'll draw it like this, positive, negative, and we'll call that VEMF for electromagnetic field. And then that's all the components in here. So we'll just bring this around, draw a ground on there, and this is it for our electric circuit. Now we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law to figure out what the equation for the circuit is. So we can divide our current going around this way, I, and then we'll just go around and use the passive sign convention to figure out what the equation here is. So starting from here, we see the negative sign first on the voltage source, so we'll go negative V plus the voltage across the resistor is IR, so IR plus the voltage across an inductor is L di dt. And then we're seeing the positive end of this voltage source, so plus V E M F. And Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the sum of all the voltages in a loop is equal to zero. And that's it for the electronic side of this. Now we can look at the mechanical side of the motor. So we know that there's an armature inside of the motor and it has some mass. So we'll go ahead and draw that. Just gonna draw a cylinder here, keep it simple. So that mass is gonna cause it to resist turning and that resistance is known as the moment of inertia or J. And on one end, we know that we're putting a torque into this because the circuit adds a torque to the mass and that's what makes it spin. So we'll just call that TM for the torque of the motor. And we also know that if you turn this, it doesn't spin forever. So there has to be some sort of friction in there. And we can go ahead and represent that with a damper. So we can draw that in here. And the other end will just connect to ground. And some people might draw this friction as a bunch of little X's down here or something. And that's fine too. Do whatever you feel the most comfortable with. So this is it for the mechanical side of it. And from here, we can draw a free body diagram. So once again, I'll just draw a cylinder. And we know we have this torque here, the input torque. And from this damper, we'll call the damping constant B. We know that there's gonna be another torque. And that one will define this way as the positive direction, call it positive theta, that angle. And this damper is going to add a torque that'll be B times the opposite end, uh, which is just going to be zero over here, minus the end that we're at, which is defined as theta. And since it's a damper, you have to do theta dot. So now that's it for all of our torques here. And we know that the sum of all the torques on a body is equal to the moment of inertia of the body, J, times the angular acceleration, alpha. But for our case, since we're using theta and theta dot, we'll just write it as J 
theta double dot. Since acceleration is the second derivative of the position, angular acceleration is the second derivative of the angle. From here, we can write out the sum of the torques now. So we know that there's Tm, the torque from the motor, plus, or actually this is going to be a negative, B times theta dot equals to J times theta double dot. And that's our mechanical equation. So now we have these two equations. But what you'll see is that they don't actually have anything in common. This one's got i's and b's. This one's got thetas and t's. And we need to figure out how to link these together. So what we need to know is a couple of constants about our motor. The first one is called kt, or the torque constant. And that is defined as the torque of the motor over the current that's going through the circuit. So from this relationship, we can figure out that Tm, the torque of the motor, is equal to kT times i. And then we can go ahead and plug that into here. And then another constant that we can know about our motor is called kB, or the back EMF constant. And that's equal to the induced voltage over here, VEMF over omega, the uh, angular velocity of the motor. And since, once again, we're using theta and theta dot, we can replace omega with theta dot. Just to keep everything the same. And that's going to tell us that the induced voltage, VEMF, is equal to KB times theta dot. So then we can plug this one, let's go around here, into there. And by plugging those in, we get these two equations. From the electric side, we get negative VN plus Ri plus L di dt. You can write i dot here as well, but it gets a little confusing with the two dots over the i, so I just leave it like this. Plus kb theta dot equals to zero. And then the mechanical equation here, we've got kt i minus b theta dot equals to j theta double dot. And now we have these two equations and two unknowns, those unknowns being i and theta. And we have their derivatives in there as well, but that's okay. So from here, if you're doing maybe like a classical control problem, you can find the Laplace transform of these two equations and get you a transfer function. Or if you're doing something uh, with modern control theory, you can put these into state space form and then solve your problem that way. But either way, this is the model for a DC motor, or at least a basic one. And it's a good starting point for any problem where you're working with a DC motor. So thanks for watching.